The following is a presentation of TFNN. The Trader's Edge with Steve Rhodes. Call now, toll free at 1-877-927-6648 or internationally at 727-873-7618. The Trader's Edge. Now, Steve Rhodes. Good morning, folks. Welcome to the July 22nd. Let's say the 20. No, the 21st. The July 21st. The fantastic Friday edition of today's Trader Z Show. I'm your host, Stevie Perseverance Rhodes, who absolutely knows that each of us should always be pioneers of our future versus prisoners of our past. Hope everyone out there is having a great day. Hey, let's make sure we have an extraordinary one. Now, the easiest way to do that. Well, it's to always remember that life is happening for us, not to us. That's right. When you and I make that one little two by four shift, it means we can find the gift in every set of circumstance that life is going to toss at us. Now, today, you and I, we're going to go check on the circumstance of these markets. We'll go figure out what those bulls and bears, what those buyers and sellers are communicating to you and I at just past 11 o'clock in the morning. I want you to know I'm absolutely grateful for your presence here, but even more important than that, and that's this. During this next 53 minutes, I'm here to serve you. So feel free to pick up that phone. You can dial on it at 877-927-6648. Now, if you've got a question but you can't call in, we've got you covered. You can send me an email. Send that off to Steve at TFN.com. Inside the subject heading, please put radio show question. Of course, if you're inside our Tiger's Den, well, then any and every ping will do. So let's go ahead and get this show started on fantastic Friday. Of course, this is Tiger Financial News Network. I'm Steve Rhodes. Welcome to the show. Right now, a slightly mixed bag with regard to, nope, not anymore. We got all U.S. indices trading to the upside. Dow's up 83, S&P's up 14, NASDAQ 128, Russell's up just slightly, Semi's up 33, Trend is up 52. You've got gold trading down nine bucks at 1962. Silver's off 12 pennies at 2484. Uh, Lightspeed crude is up 68 pennies, 7633 is the print there. Natural gas down two cents, 30 treasury. Print out at 126.25, that is up 19 ticks. Leading the charge dollar wise to the upside, you've got Roper Technologies. It's a 4% move for 19 bucks. Asmill Holdings, 19 bucks as well, nearly 3%. Over 3% for Thermo Fisher, 17 bucks. Biorad Laboratories, 4%, 17 bucks. And Broadcom, 14 bucks less than two percent move to the upside the stinkers to the downside auto nation down 14 bucks nearly eight percent netflix eight bucks nearly two percent lithium motors seven to change two and a half percent alby marls down three percent or seven bucks nearly two percent for nvidia that's move of six dollars to the downside but let's begin the day let's uh, begin the day by doing what well i'll tell you what let's do we'll take a look at market breadth where are we at market breadth wise the 30 minute es the 30 minute nq we are currently in a bullish position on the s p 500 for its 30 minute time frame. I mean, we have more instruments trade above profile than below profile. When it comes to the NDX 100, we presently have 46 above and 17 below. So the 30 minute time frames for the equity futures are, or for the ES and the NQ are bullish. Let's look at those other four time frames 60, 240 daily and weekly. We begin by taking a look at the ES mini, the SP 500. It's its 60 minute time frame that has 136 above and 151 below. So still a little bit of a bearish position there. If we take a look at the NDX 100, it's other time frames, by the way, we're bullish. The NASDAQ 100 is bullish for all four time frames, 62, 40 daily, weekly, and of course the 30 minute that we looked at first. Okay, so that helps us understand exactly where we're at from a market breast standpoint. Let's go take a look at where we're at with regard to what's going on in the daily equity future contracts. It appears to Stevie, at least at this point in time, that is, unless the Dow, the YM, generates a new high table, even if it does that, it won't completely change things. It will change what I'm about to say. What I'm about to say is we should end up 
up with topping patterns at day's end for all four equity future contracts. In the case of the Dow equity future contract, lower left, you will see letter G. That is wave number seven. It's either in wave number seven or wave, num wave number four, letter E. But at this stage, you do have a seventh wave move. A lower high today would uh, trigger a seventh wave move top. If we take out the high of yesterday, well, we are in bar number eight. We're likely going to complete bar number eight. We need a spike above yesterday's high between today and Tuesday of next week to potentially formulate a TD9 count top, but you don't necessarily need that. You've got wave number seven. If we don't take out yesterday's high, that will give you a topping pattern. The ES and the NQ yesterday both confirmed Rhodes momentum indicator tops for their daily time frames. A TD9 count top is likely to be formed today for the Russell 2000. Now, the Russell and the Dow both have A to B equal CD patterns, of which the price of objectives have not been hit. They could be seeking those out, but we will have, as I say, topping patterns for sure inside the ES, the NQ, and the Russell 2000, and most likely the Dow as well. So that's what we're looking at. But what we have out there, as you saw, was mostly positive market breadth. So uh, in the case of the ES Mini, it's trading just above its green oscillator and change line. If it does close above that, odds favor and move up to the top of that profile. Again, that was in that 4609 area. The NQ is trading below its oscillator and change line, and therefore 15872 or thereabouts becomes its likely price target or resistance level. Now let's go from the daily time frame. We'll go ahead and just close these charts out free up some resources. Let's go take a look at the intraday charts for the ES and the NQ. Let's begin by taking a look at the NQ. What do we know out here? The one thing that we know, or the one time frame that we know something about is the four hour time frame. And the four hour time frame generated a TD nine count bottom. It has a Rhodes momentum indicator top, led to a TD nine count bottom. We have a new profile that is formed that is above price. That is a bearish message. That tells us about overhead supply. So what are we watching here? It doesn't mean that the market can't rally up to that level. And that level is 15,761. The mere fact that we've got a TD9 count bottom that is present, the mere fact that price pushed lower, didn't take that out this morning, would really suggest to me that we may see that move, that move into the NQ up to the 15,761 area. What happens if price gets above that? If price gets above that, then price will head to its sell zone between 15,868 and 15,904. What happens if price doesn't get up there? Well, what we want to watch is that TD9 count bottom. That's the low that came in at 5 o'clock yesterday afternoon. That was at 15,547. If we close below that, we're most certainly going to go tag 15,479. And we could also form an A to B equals CD to the downside. But we don't have that pattern just yet. We also don't, on an intraday basis, have any other bottoming signals that at least stick out to Stevie here. So why did price stop where it did this morning? And that's a great question. On the 30-minute time frame chart, that's easy to answer with regard to the NQ. The issue is I can't answer this with that uh, for the ES or the Russell or the Dow using a 30-minute time frame chart. But who is the leader out here? Is the leader the NQ? Well, if the leader is the NQ, then what price ran into was its breakdown, TD9 count breakdown resistance at 15,720. Now, that's pretty important. How do I do this? So oh, let's see if we can do this. Let's take the 30-minute chart over here. Let's see what we had. We have both. We don't. I just have the bottoms. But what we're seeing here is we are seeing on this NQ 30-minute chart, we are seeing TD9 count breakout support levels fail. And if we take a look at coming back to the early part of July out here, let's just take this from the uh, July 10th time frame out here. Those levels only failed once for a short period of time out here. So this is beginning to tell you and I that we may indeed have a change of trend that's unfolding in the NQ. How will we know that? Well, price would have to close below the bottom of that daily profile. Steve Rhodes with TFNN. We'll be right back. Currencies, commodities, and bond markets are as important as ever right now with how they're driving the volatility in equity markets across the globe, which is why it's a great time to try out Teddy Kegstat's Tiger Forex Report. Teddy Kegstat breaks down the Forex markets every Monday using his 30-plus years of experience as a trading veteran of futures, Forex, stocks, and options. Teddy releases his weekly Tiger Forex Report every Monday morning with coverage of all the major currency pairs, including the dollar index, the euro dollar, pound dollar, dollar Swiss, dollar yen, as well as many more, and he also has weekly coverage of the crude oil market and the 30-year T-bonds as they both influence Forex markets tremendously. 
When you sign up for the Tiger Forex Report, you also gain instant access to Teddy's 60-minute webinar archive he just hosted, Forex Strategies and Fundamentals, What is Behind the Tiger Forex Report. For all the details and to start your 30-day Tiger Forex Report subscription today, visit the front page of TFNN.com. TFNN, educating investors. You might think that if you want to be successful at trading in the stock market, you're going to need a crystal ball. After all, it's impossible to predict the future, right? Like any endeavor in life, before you decide it's impossible, get some advice from the experts. You might find that it's not so impossible after all. For daily market overviews that give you direction on the key indices, selective stocks, and commodities, subscribe to the opening call newsletter at TFNN.com. The opening call newsletter is written by Basil Chapman, creator of the trading methodology known as the Chapman Wave. The Chapman Wave up-down sequence gives you an edge in identifying price turns, finding the peaks and valleys in stock prices. Get the opening call newsletter by Basil Chapman in your inbox every day. First-time subscribers also get a 30-day money-back guarantee. If you're not satisfied, let us know, and you'll get a full refund within 30 days of signing up. TFNN.com, educating investors. Steve Rhodes started his trading career as a student almost 20 years ago, and the student has now become the master. Steve won the prestigious Timer of the Year Award in 2018 and barely missed that mark again in 2019, finishing at number two for the year. An amazing accomplishment. Steve Rhodes is committed to sharing his techniques and knowledge with anyone who wants to learn. And he shares his vast amount of trading knowledge every day in his Mastering Probability newsletter. Steve's award-winning newsletter, Mastering Probability, is delivered every trading day with updates throughout the afternoon. Sign up for Steve's market newsletter, Mastering Probability, and you'll receive access to seven of Steve's educational webinars absolutely free. At TFNN, all our newsletters Letters come with a 30-day money-back guarantee, so you have absolutely nothing to worry about. Visit TFNN.com and try Mastering Probability 30 days risk-free today. TFNN, educating investors. Call now, toll-free at 1-877-927-6648. Internationally at 727-873-7618. Welcome back. First, let's uh, quickly uh, take a look at the ES Mini out here. So we take a look at the ES Mini, as I mentioned before, as far as the rally, why did it stop where it did? I don't have any kind of a topping pattern. I don't have a resistance level, really, that stuck out at me on in any time frame out there. But when we do take a look at the ES Mini charts, the daily time frame, does have that Rhodes Momentum Indicator uh, top that is out here. Um, what else can I really share with you here about the ES? Not much. There's just not much that I can uh, share with you here, so I won't. So let's just uh, move on. Let's move on to our first question. Our first question coming in from Nicholas. This is from yesterday. And Nicholas was asking the question about whether or not the S&P 500 somehow was correlated with gold from a directional standpoint. So I told him, well, I'd be happy to uh, answer that question today by using our correlation tool. So that's what we're going to go take a look at here next. And here, what this does, the top portion of the chart is gold. The center portion is the ES meaning, and the bottom portion is the correlation. Now, I can set this to a number of different uh, days or averages. I have the bottom panel or the correlation setting set at five days, so we can take a look at a five-day average. When the bars on the bottom are above zero, it tells us about a directional correlation. In other words, they're both moving in the same direction. Whereas when bars are below that zero line, it is a inverse relationship. Well, I'd have to say that the bars here are pretty equally split between the two. So I think what we could do here, Nicholas, is both you and I and our everybody else inside the inside the Tiger Stand listening on Tiger TV knows that there is no correlation. There is no directional correlation that exists that we can at least see here. And taking a look at how gold and the S&P 500 trade, and this takes us back in November of 2022 through today. So no correlation there to uh, be uh, worried about or concerned out. So uh, glad to have answered that question for you. We have a question. The next question that came in is about is from Ron and First Station, I believe. Let me see. First Station was about natural gas. First Station says, what's your thoughts on natural gas? You're in the UNG long. Do you hold or sell? And Ron is asking where to take along in natural gas. So 
we'll, we'll put uh, both those questions together here and we're going to go answer it. Now, the way that we're going to answer it is by looking at the natural gas chart. So we're going to switch panels here. We're going to go back to my white background charts. We'll be there momentarily. And as soon as we get there, let's focus in on, let's go left to right. Left to right, on the monthly time frame chart, you've got a potential for a TD9 count bottom. In order for that TD9 count bottom pattern to form this month, that means by uh, whenever the last trading day of the month is, which is when. Take a quick peek here. Today's the 21st. Last trading day is going to be, uh, no, not next Friday. It'll be the following Monday on uh, July 31st. July 31st, if price is able to close below, so let's give you the first number. If price is able to close below 2.673, the monthly time frame for natural gas will generate a TD nine count bottom. Now, why is that important? Well, it's a fairly big bottoming uh, signal here. Let's look at the yearly chart. We are in bar number nine right now. So we're really looking for a long-term bottom out there, and the monthly would certainly qualify to suggest that perhaps there is a bottom that is in. So you're one of the questions, what, what are my thoughts on natural gas? My thoughts on natural gas is that this could really take off to the upside. Now, we know on the TD9 count pattern that it doesn't have to be the low on bar number nine that identifies. It could be the bar following nine, I meaning it could be next year. So we're not gonna get ahead of our skis, so to speak, but first things first, not next Friday, but the following Monday, if you get a close below that level that I gave to you, you will have a TD9 count monthly bottom. Now, remember, of course, the low can take place the following month as well, right? Okay, and give me the bar following bar number nine. Well, the weekly says, I'm just waiting for you guys to generate your bottom signal because I already have, and it has. It's generated a Rhodes momentum indicator bottom with price consolidating with inside the profile. So since we know the top has been tested and rejected and the bottom is held as support, if you're asking me where is a place to enter, the first place that I'd be looking at is $2.53. $2.53, the bottom of that weekly profile. If we look at the daily time frame, panel number three, the uh, second one over from the upper right, we can see that price right now is trading with inside its consolidation. First station asks the question, should he sell, should he hold, should he buy? Well, where would you sell? Where you would sell from is where sellers were at. You saw that. We've been talking about that. They're at $2.75. That's what price hit yesterday. That is held. Do you sell? I don't know what your trading outcome and your trading plan was, but it most certainly is a sell area. Where would be a place to buy? The weekly time frame gave us the bottom of that profile, 253. What if price doesn't pull back there? Are there any other areas of support? Well, the other areas of support inside of natural gas one would be around 263, around because that's the oscillator and change line. And as price moves up and down, that will move. But what won't change is the bullish structure daily profile zone. That's between 250 and 260. So if price pulls back into that area and you're looking to get into UNG, and by the way, it's a September contract that is exclusively making up UNG at this moment, that would be the area to enter. 250 would be the better of those areas because that is the bottom of the daily profile, and that's lining up with the bottom of the weekly profile. With regard to intraday signals out here, the four hour time frame chart um, does not have a signal just yet. No, it does not have a signal. Uh, the, the two hour chart has a TD9 count top. So you want to watch support, which has been tested. That's at $2.69. If price closed about $2.69, that would be signaling to move back to the 2.59 level. So let's summarize a natural gas and UNG and boil. First, longer term, we may be able to get a weekly or monthly TD9 count bottom to go along with a yearly TD9 count bottom to go along with a weekly Rhodes momentum indicator bottom. With regard to the daily time frame, believe it or not, I don't have a bottom signal here. That doesn't doesn't always happen, but I certainly I don't have a bottom signal here. Really, what we've got is um, just price trading with inside its uh, daily set of profiles out there. So the buy point again around the 250-ish type area out there. Hope that helps you out, both Ron and First Station. Thanks for taking the time to write in and have a fantastic weekend. The next question coming in from McGuppy inside the Tiger's Den. McGuppy is asking about ticker symbol MP. So we're going to pull that up on our screen here momentarily. We're going to go take a look at it. And his specific question is, where would you add? I believe that was the question. At least that's one that I wrote down. So we take a look at MP. MP has done what? Well, it's trading below on a daily time frame. McGuppy, it is trading below profile. It is trading below an oscillator and change line. It is bar number six. I believe that price will go target its TD9 count breakout area.
And that is at 221.16. Doesn't mean it gets all the way back there. I'd be looking for a TD9 count bottom to potentially form. That's the pattern that's in play right now. There's also an A to B equals CD pattern. Was the B point passed with volume? Well, the B point, that's from the trading day of January, uh, July 17th, did volume of 2.2 million shares. It was passed with 2.2 million. It was passed with 1.9, and today so far you've done 673. Let's call it kind of a coin toss. It doesn't really matter. You're below the B point of an A to B equals CD. Do they always have to be crossed with volume? The answer to that is no, they do not. We take a look at just simply where's the one-to-one -one on the A to B equals CD. It's down around the 2290-ish type area. So as price gets down there, if you were to see a bullish reversal candle, that would then form a buy point. That would form a Gartley buy pattern. Short of that unfolding, price will target the 2116 area. On a weekly basis, price did close above the top of its weekly profile for two weeks in a row, and price is testing that level right now. That is at 2363. If price closed below 2363, you could see a move back to 2190. That's kind of tying out to what we just looked at on the daily time frame. We'll finish taking a look at MP for McGuppy and the Tigers Den as soon as we get back. Gold Report. As a precious metal, gold is still king. It continues to hold the most effective safe haven and hedging properties across the global major trading hubs of the London OTC market, the U.S. futures market, and the Shanghai Gold Exchange. The Gold Report. Tom O'Brien publishes his weekly Gold Report every Monday morning for subscribers, consisting of coverage of the XAU, HUI, GDX, the dollar, bonds, the South African Rand, as well as 25 different mining equities with specific buy-sell recommendations. The Gold Report. New subscribers get a 30-day money-back guarantee so you have nothing to risk. Subscribe to Tom O'Brien's Gold Report newsletter now at TFNN.com. TFNN has just launched their new trading room, The Tiger's Den, hosted at Discord. TFNN has been educating traders for more than 20 years with live programming hosted by a variety of professional traders during market hours. And now they are expanding their reach with The Tiger's Den, available to all tigers and tigresses for just $1 for the year. There's no catch or added costs when you join our community of traders. In The Tiger's Den, you can look over the shoulders of Tom O'Brien and the other TFNN hosts while they analyze charts during their live Tiger TV programs and join an interactive trading community with hundreds of members exchanging ideas. Interact with other Tigers and Tigresses as they share trading ideas, news analysis, and discuss the market action all trading day, even at night and on the weekends. The Tigers Den at Discord is accessible on mobile or tablets as well, so it's always at your reach. To sign up today and become a part of this educational community of traders, just visit the front page of TF. NN.com. Sharpening your skills as an investor is like getting better at playing a musical instrument. You have to practice, sure, but you also need excellent instruction from experts. At TFNN, you'll get advice and guidance from the authority in technical market analysis. And it's not just dry, tedious text either. TFNN airs live financial content streamed live on TFNN.com and TFNN's YouTube channel with Tiger TV. Live every market day from 8.30 a.m. to 4 p.m. Eastern. For free, each host is an experienced trader and gives their take on the market while taking calls and questions live from around the world. From the moment the market opens until the closing bell sounds, Tiger TV has eight different shows with expert hosts to help you make the right moves with your money. Watch online at TFNN.com or on TFNN's YouTube channel and become the investor you were born to be. TFNN, educating investors. Don't forget, you can listen to TFNN live on your mobile device 24 hours per day. Go to TFNN.com, then hit Watch Tiger TV. That's TFNN.com, then hit Watch Tiger TV.
Welcome back, folks. We're still looking at the charts here for MP. We can see that uh, as we uh, just finished this half-hour session, it generated a Rhodes Mintum indicator bottom. You're in wave number seven. Price should bounce up to its oscillator and change line at 2371 out there. But if we do close below on a 30-minute basis, the low of the day, the low of the day so far for MP is... Low of the day is uh, 2346. If you close below that, that's just going to add to uh, what really the daily and the weekly charts are, or at least the daily chart is communicating to us, is that it wants lower price. So hope that helps you out, McGuppy, with regard to MP and what it is doing. Mr. Bill wants to take a look at NVIDIA. NVDA is a ticker symbol. Let's go take a look at it. And in the case of NVIDIA, what do we have here? We've got a wave seven top, that's letter G. So it's got a topping signal. Price right now is trading with inside its profile. So there's a brand new profile that's formed for NBDA. The bottom of that profile is at 444.75. So we want to watch that, Mr. Bill. If price closes below that, we're really trading into it right now. So I've got actually, yeah, 444.75. If price closes below 444.75, we're going to see a change in trend signal out here for NVIDIA. Now that's a likely outcome. I say that's a likely outcome. Why? Actually, I don't say that's a likely outcome. I thought I had a TD9 count on the weekly chart. I do not. What we do have, though, on the weekly chart is wave number seven. So it looks like we're going to get a two wave seven patterns here, NVIDIA on the daily and NVIDIA on the weekly, unless there's some kind of miraculous rally out there. So it does have a topping pattern. When you get a topping pattern, price should pull back to support. Where's the first level of support? 418 and change that happens to be the weekly oscillator and change line so mr bill i believe it's really critical with regard to nvidia for it to be able to hold its profile level of support 444.75 if it closes below that does it guarantee a change in trend no we saw a couple closes below that uh here back in the uh, early part um, a couple weeks ago back in the uh, late part of june out there we never saw two consecutive closes below the profile if we do see that, that could be telling us about a change in trend. But right now, it looks like 444.75 is the uh, target area. No idea whether it's going to bust through that or not, but you are going to have a daily and a weekly top. Um, so that's what we got for NVIDIA. You know, one thing I meant to uh, do this here, I did this during the break for uh, natural gas. And natural gas is now just starting its favorable seasonal cycle. So First Station and Ron had asked me about that. This is a 32-year uh, chart uh, for natural gas. Um, you know, don't get too overly. September is, is a decent month. If you take a look at annually, the best months are March and April. But we are in a more favorable seasonal time period that typically lasts through about the middle of October. So I most certainly want to be able to throw, it out, that, throw that out to you as well um, uh, so that could aid in your decision making. So back to NVIDIA, is there anything else out here that we can use to assess what's going on with NVIDIA? On a 30-minute time frame basis, this has a TD9 count bottom that's going to complete at 12 noon. So watch the low of this pattern out here. The last TD9 count that formed on the 30-minute was back at 3.30 or 2.30, uh, 3.30 in the afternoon on July 14th. That led to a rally, uh, led to a rally all the way back up to its TD9 count top. So is the third time a charm? If it is, then what we should at least see here is a rally up to its oscillator and change line. Currently printed in the 452-ish area. You've got resistance at 454.06. That's really where, if this is just a counter trend move for NVIDIA for its 30-minute time frame, Mr. Bill, that's where price should find resistance, the center of that bullish structured 30-minute profile. If price closes above it, we're back up to its TD knockout breakdown resistance level at 461. So overall, with regard to NVIDIA, you've got two Wave seven tops. If the daily support area fails, I believe we have lower price coming at us. And that 418 area would be the next price target. So hope that helps you out. Uh, Mr. Dan inside the Tigers Den wanted to take a look at UPS. So there's interesting price action out here. And if we take a look at UPS, boy, it is bullish. It's bullish on the daily. It's bullish on the weekly. Now, there's A to B equal CD patterns out here on the daily time frame. No reason for me to draw those in. If we were to see a bearish reversal candle, that would generate a sell the D point, or in this case here, a Gartley sell pattern. We don't have any kind of signal that that's going to unfold. If we look at the weekly time frame chart, we're above profile, above the oscillator and change line. The weekly chart says, I want to go tackle those most recent highs. And that would really be up in the area of about the 197-ish type range out there. The monthly chart, 
is taking is trying to get back inside his profile. It'll do that if it closes above 188.45. Well, we're trading above that as we speak right now. So that's pretty bullish, and it suggests that it wants to at least get up to 191.52. So I don't see anything bearish about UPS, even though there's some strikes looming. I believe that's what you were uh, talking about, Dan. If we take a look at this, we'll be four days in a row to the upside for UPS. Now, it doesn't typically get more than five or six consecutive days to the upside. So what UPS should be doing, even all that, what I just said sounds bullish, you should expect or anticipate a retracement to occur sometime over the next couple of days. In other words, the rally should lose a little bit of steam out here. Maybe it actually pulls back and tests that daily oscillator and change line. That's currently printed at 185.25. That is not my call, not just yet. We don't have a top out there to suggest that. We just have the normal dance moves of uh, consecutive days higher, consecutive days lower. So, Dan, I uh, hope that covers the uh, interesting price action inside of UPS. Again, things here look hunky-dory, looks bullish, looks like it wants to continue to move higher. Um, well, that answered all of the questions. Wow, was there anything inside the Tiger's Den? Anything else? Uh, I think Steve, I was asking where to get out if it goes against me. But Guppy sounds like 2116. Uh, but Guppy, what was the one we were looking at? Where to get out? Um that was on MP. So I did look for MP, uh, by the way, in the seasonal pattern, McGuppy. Nothing had pulled up for it. I did that offline, off screen. So I didn't have anything there. But you're asking, where would you add? Uh, so I'm in long. Looked to me like it was trying to bottom in May. Okay. And where would you add more and where would you exit the position? Well, okay, so I guess where I'd add more would be a, a bottoming pattern on the daily time frame. Where would I get out? Well, you're still in it. I don't know. You got in in early May, um, or you got in when it, you thought. I mean, it did make a nice bottom at the end of May. It made a nice roads momentum indicator bottom. So you've got that there, but price is pulling back, and you're below, you're below support. I would have to say you're watching that weekly level, and if we get a weekly close below 23.63, um, that's going to tell you to expect lower price, and price could get all the way back to 21.16. So you've got to make a, a, a decision. You know, obviously you've got to make a decision yourself, anyways. But that's what it would be signaling to you and I was that price would be targeting that level. So if it targets that level, then make your decision based upon that. So watch that uh, weekly profile, that top of that weekly profile today, and that may assist you. Fletch would like to take a look at 3M MMM as a ticker symbol. So let's go out to Minnesota. Let's see what 3M is doing. And uh, right now it's trading out at, uh, looks like 115, well, 103, 103.90. And uh, what it's found is resistance at the top of its daily profile. So the first thing here, Fletch, you're, uh, I'm from the long side. Well, you're running into resistance. You'd love to see it close today above 104.22, just like you did yesterday, because then you'd get two consecutive closes above the top of the profile. But really, where's your resistance level? You know the answer to this, Fletch. It's at 104.60. TD9 count, breakdown resistance. Steve Rhodes with TFNN. We'll come right back here. We'll take a look at 3M. We're going to take a look at Mosaic, M-O-S. You might think that if you want to be successful at trading in the stock market, you're going to need a crystal ball. After all, it's impossible to predict the future, right? Like any endeavor in life, before you decide it's impossible, get some advice from the experts. You might find that it's not so impossible after all. For daily market overviews that give you direction on the key indices, selective stocks, and commodities, subscribe to the opening call newsletter at TFNN.com. The opening call newsletter is written by Basil Chapman, creator of the trading methodology known as the Chapman Wave. The Chapman Wave up-down sequence gives you an edge in identifying price turns, finding the peaks and valleys in stock prices. Get the opening call newsletter by Basil Chapman in your inbox every day. First-time subscribers also get a 30-day money-back guarantee. If you're not satisfied, let us know, and you'll get a full refund within 30 days of signing up. TFNN.com, educating investors. 
Everything in the universe is governed by the Fibonacci sequence. This mathematical principle is responsible for everything, from the most aesthetically pleasing artwork to patterns in the stock market. To stay on top of stock patterns you can take advantage of, sign up for the Fibonacci 24-7 newsletter at TFNN.com. When you subscribe, you'll get a weekly report from veteran day trader Larry Pesavento on stocks you need to pay attention to. And you can trust Larry's analysis. After all, he's got 45 years experience as a day trader. Larry will also provide daily charts, videos, and data on the key markets that he's tracking. Expect notifications from Larry on market movement you need to act on at any time. First-time subscribers also get a 30-day money-back guarantee. If you're not satisfied, let us know and you'll get a full refund within 30 days of signing up. Subscribe to the Fibonacci 24-7 newsletter today. TFNN.com. Educating investors. Are China A shares hot or not? If you trade China A shares, now may be time to take a closer look. Trade CHAU or CHAD, Directions Daily CSI 300 China A share bull and bear ETFs. China A shares in either direction. Visit directioninvestments.com today. An investor should consider the investment objectives, risks, charges, and expenses of the Direction shares carefully before investing. The prospectus and summary prospectus contain this and other information about Direction shares. To obtain a prospectus or summary prospectus, please contact Direction shares at 866-476-7523. The prospectus or summary prospectus should be read carefully before investing. An investment in the funds is subject to risk, including the possible loss of principal. The funds are designed to be utilized only by sophisticated investors such as traders and active investors. Distributor for Side Fund Services, LLC. This program is brought to you by Vista Gold, traded on the NYSE American and TSX under the symbol VGZ. Welcome back, folks. We're taking a look at uh, 3M for Fletch. He's uh, in it from the long side. And so, Fletch, you're, uh, I, as your pilot, I'm going to tell you to fasten your seatbelts. And that oxygen uh, uh, mask may fall down, so make sure you put that on first out here. The reason why it's going to get pretty turbulent out here is because you're running up against resistance, no matter whether we look at daily, weekly, or monthly. On the daily time frame, we identified that at the 104.60 level. On the weekly time frame, it's up at 107.30. Granted, that's a $4 move. And on the monthly time frame, it's up at the 105-ish area. So you're about to run into a bunch of resistance out here. I don't have any kind of a topping signal, although markets can top when they get back to their breakdown resistance level out there. So you want to watch that 104.60. Do I have any signals to suggest that this is any kind of significant top? I don't. But you're just up against resistance, resistance, resistance. No matter how we take, no matter how we cut it. 3M, as far as uh, what 3M looks like on a uh, seasonal standpoint, let's see if we can figure this out here before my monitor starts flicking, flickering. Seems to have a trouble for this from this application right now. But I did reset everything, so maybe we're good. So with regard to 3M, we've got uh, 61 years worth of uh, data, and uh, what we can see here is that we are in the unfavorable seasonal time frame. So we go back, we take a look at the charts. The charts are up at resistance, but they're doing pretty good. I don't have any kind of real negative thing other than uh, prices running up into the resistance level. But you're going against the grain, so to speak, from a seasonal standpoint, where the bottom doesn't typically come in in 3M over a 61-year period until about the September time frame. Anything else that I can uh, share with you on 3M? Nothing else that I see. So, Fletch, I hope that helps you out from the long side. Best of luck to you there. Electric Light Orchestra would like to take a look at Mosaic. MOS is the ticker symbol. That was all that was requested. Mosaic looks like it's got an A to B equals CD pattern out here. So it looks like it's achieved the one-to-one -one price target. Let's draw that A to B equals CD pattern in here. Here's A to B. Let's just move this over to the C point out there. There you go. So you can see we've achieved the one-to-one. -one. So what that says, ELO, is you want to be on the lookout for some type of bearish reversal candle. If that were to form, you would then get a sell the D point pattern. If you get a sell the D point pattern, price would then pull back to support. And in this instance here on a daily time frame for Mosaic, support is at the 36.90 level. That's the top of its daily profile. A second level of support comes in on the weekly chart. And on the weekly chart, 
pro su profile support. It looks like it's going to close above it this week, 37.90. That's a pretty good sign. That's telling you about a potential change in trend out there, or at least tells you that the rally should continue. And on a monthly basis, prices trading above is getting back inside its monthly profile. On Mosaic, that happens to be at 38.16. So not this coming Monday, but the following Monday, you'd love to see Mosaic close above 38.16. So with regard to Mosaic, what should you expect? Well, you should expect to get some type of retracement. Will that generate the bearish reversal candle? I don't know the answer to that, but this could be day number five of consecutive moves higher. We haven't seen this extend past six consecutive moves higher, and that was back on April the 3rd. So you should be expecting or anticipating, and we are in, uh, is a, a two-day, a two-bar pullback out there. And maybe price will go target that 36.46 or 36.90 level out there. It doesn't have to. Without a top, if we got a bearish reversal candle, then I would have a different viewpoint on it. But that's not the pattern that is in place right now. I don't know why when I uh, put up the monthly chart, it didn't give us all the patterns that are out there. So there we go with regard to the patterns inside of Mosaic. So I hope that helps you out, uh, Electric Light. And uh, thanks so much for the request. Mimi wrote in, and Mimi wants to take a look at ticker symbol PSX. So let's get over and take a look at those charts. PSX is Phillips 66. And Phillips 66 appears to be forming an A to B equals CD to the upside. And that A to B equals CD to the upside would give us a 1 1 price projection of 112.84. Now, the B point, the high of that is at 103.93. Did volume there of 2.8 million shares yesterday as price was moving up into it was 2.5. So far today, you're at about 900,000 in the first two hours of trading. That could get us over the 2.5 million mark. And if we do, you have a 1 to 1 A to B equals CD with a price projection of 112. 1284. Now, are you asking? You were asking about profile support. Well, on a daily basis, the profile support is at 97.34. You're well above that, so that profile support could, our profile resistance, that could become support. There is no other profile resistance for you to worry about. The resistance on a daily basis is up at 106.20, and 106.20 is its TD9 count breakdown resistance. But if price can get through that, Mimi, then you're looking at a move up to the 112.84 is area at a minimum. Why a minimum? Because that B to C retracement level was only a 37 point a 37% retracement level. Typically, you do more than a 1, A to B equals CD. So the more than 1 or the 1 1.272 expansion of that pattern is 116.70. Turns out that on the weekly time frame, the top of its profile is up at the 113.53. Remember, the daily has an A to B equals CD. We don't know if it's confirmed by volume or not. That would take us up to 112.84. So, uh, by the way, you were asking about profile levels. Well, 104.17 is the center of its weekly profile. And if price closes above that, that will be another bullish outcome. On a monthly time frame, you are inside a bullish structured profile with price above the green oscillator and change line. That assures us of price trying to target the top of that profile, 113.53. So overall, with regard to profiles, what do you have to support levels? What do you want to watch or pay attention to? Boy, it's just resistance up at that 113.53 area right now. Support. 98.78, 99.34, 101.36, and 97.34. Those would be your support areas, Mimi. I hope that helps you out. Thanks so much for taking the time to write in. Um, let's see if there's any other requests by mail, email here. And the answer is, drum roll, the answer is no, there is not. Inside the Tiger's Den... I don't believe there is any other request out here. So there's not. So now what do we do, folks? No requests. Yes, sir. Please bisect and dissect GDX. Thank you, Mr. John inside the Tiger's Den. So let's do that. Let's put up the charts here for GDX. GDX today pulled back and tested a key level of support, Mr. John. It pulled back and it tested its oscillator and change line. So we take a look at the GDX out here. What are we going to see? We don't have an A to B equals CD. That B point out here, which would have been the trading day of July 6, pulled back too far. So that's uh, below 0.786 retracement. No A to B equals CD pattern. 
all that we have is price pulling back and testing support, two support areas, at least at this moment in time. The first one was the oscillator and change line, currently printed at 31.17. The second one was the bottom of its profile, 31.35. As long as those areas hold, the GDX uh, should either consolidate with inside its daily profile or resume its move higher. Both of those really going in the same direction out there. On a weekly basis, we've got a beautiful TD9 count bottom with price finding resistance at the top of its profile. That key level there, Mr. Z, is 32.40. If we can get a close above that, that will tell us about a change in direction and that change in direction ought to take the GDX up towards 3581. 3581 is a TD9 count breakdown resistance area. On a monthly time frame, the GDX is above its profile. It's above a green oscillator and change line. Its monthly conditions are bullish. So in summary here, with regard to the GDX, we are bullish on the monthly. We are dealing with resistance on the weekly up at 3240 with a beautiful TD9 count bottom, a nice roads momentum indicator bottom on the daily, price pulling back and testing support and support has held. That may be the entry point into the GDX or the addition to your position inside the GDX. Steve Rhodes with TFNN. We'll be right back. If you're looking for potential trading setups in the stock market, then Rocket Equities and Options Report is a newsletter you should try. Tommy O'Brien delivers options and equity trades when the markets present them using a combination of fundamentals and technicals. Sign up for Rocket Equities and Options Report today with a 30-day money-back guarantee so you have nothing to risk. For all the details and to start your subscription today, visit the front page of TFNN.com. TFNN, educating investors. You might think that if you want to be successful at trading in the stock market, you're going to need a crystal ball. After all, it's impossible to predict the future, right? Like any endeavor in life, before you decide it's impossible, get some advice from the experts. You might find that it's not so impossible after all. For daily market overviews that give you direction on the key indices, selective stocks, and commodities, subscribe to the opening call newsletter at TFNN.com. The opening call newsletter is written by Basil Chapman, creator of the trading methodology known as the Chapman Wave. The Chapman Wave up-down sequence gives you an edge in identifying price turns, finding the peaks and valleys in stock prices. Get the opening call newsletter by Basil Chapman in your inbox every day. First-time subscribers also get a 30-day money-back guarantee. If you're not satisfied, let us know, and you'll get a full refund within 30 days of signing up. TFNN.com, educating investors. Everything in the universe is governed by the Fibonacci sequence. This mathematical principle is responsible for everything from the most aesthetically pleasing artwork to patterns in the stock market. To stay on top of stock patterns you can take advantage of, sign up for the Fibonacci 24-7 newsletter at TFNN.com. When you subscribe, you'll get a weekly report from veteran day trader Larry Pesavento on stocks you need to pay attention to. And you can trust Larry's analysis. After all, he's got 45 years experience as a day trader. Larry will also provide daily charts, videos, and data on the key markets that he's tracking. Expect notifications from Larry on market movement you need to act on at any time. First-time subscribers also get a 30-day money-back guarantee. If you're not satisfied, let us know and you'll get a full refund within 30 days of signing up. Subscribe to the Fibonacci 24-7 newsletter today. TFNN.com, educating investors. TFNN has launched the Tiger's Den, hosted at Discord. TFNN has been educating traders for more than 20 years with live programming hosted by a variety of professional traders during market hours. The Tiger's Den, available to all tigers and tigresses for just $1 for the year. There's no cash or added costs when you join our community of traders. Sign up today and become a part of this educational community of traders. Just visit the front page of TFNN.com.
Welcome uh, back, uh, folks. So uh, let's try to summarize uh, where we might be here. So as we began the show, we took a look at each of the four daily equity future contracts. We don't have those up on my screen right now, but uh, you may recall each of them show topping patterns. Well, the, we've got confirmed tops inside the ES and the NQ. If the Dow does not take out yesterday's high, it will generate a wave seven uh, top out there. And um, the Russell 2000 is likely going to form a TD9 count top. Now, where are we at? Ordinarily, right now, today is July 21st, right? Ordinarily, this is the time of year where you and I would be looking for a bottom pattern. Seasonally speaking, this is a 95-year chart for the S&P 500. And we can see that it typically forms a summer low right around June the 24th, 5th, 6th. Today's July, or Ju uh, did I say June? Uh, I, I did. There was also a June bottom. But there's also another bottom that forms right around now in July. You can see this is the S&P 500. And then it just kind of moves sideways. Not like the market rallies substantially, but it just pretty much moves sideways out there. So that's what the S&P is showing us. And here's the divergence. If we go take a look at the NASDAQ 100. Now, we don't have 95 years worth of data. So we take a look at the NDX 100. We've got, what, 37 years worth of data, 38 years, 37 years worth of data. Now we take a look at it. Its unfavorable seasonal cycle begins July 16th. Well, yesterday, July 21st, July 20th, and we got that Roads Mintum Indicator top. This suggests that we ought to move down into the October, late October time frame out there. So we've got one market, the S&P 500, says we should find a bottom and move higher. And we've got the NASDAQ 100 that says that we should move lower out there. If we take a look at the Dow, we might have the Dow as well to put up here. Do we have the Dow? We've got the Dow. Here we've got more than 100 years worth of data. We have 126. And over the last 126 years worth of data, the Dow typically hasn't really topped until about September the 8th out here. It typically finds a bottom around July 24th as well. So what's controlling the market? Answer that question. And you may have the answer as to where's the direction between now and October. Folks, stay tuned for the great programming. Thanks so much for all the requests this week. Really appreciate it. Have a fabulous, a fantastic weekend. Be safe out there. And I'll see you on Marvelous, Magnificent Monday. Take care. Thanks again.